Hello everybody. Uh, so in this screencast, we're going to look at how to make uh, HTTP requests just to test and make requests. Actually, if you use the web, you are making any you are making requests. Basically, usually when you type uh, a URL in the browser here, uh, you are actually making a request. So let's say, for example, you try to go to Android developers, Android, uh, Android uh, developers, uh, developers, uh, developers okay so that's basically under developers and basically when you click on this link you are trying to to make a get request that's a get request you are going to this link and it's a get request and it's the server is responding back with this page all right so basically uh, you can make get requests very easily in the browser by just typing the url here but what about post requests and other kinds of requests so in that case to make these requests Either you develop a website where you can create a form and you submit the form and you can control the method that you are making that request through, or you use a tool. For example, the tool that we are going to use is called Postman. And um, Postman uh, is a tool that you have to download. You download the app on your computer based on the operating system that you are using. I'm using Apple. And then after you download it, you create a new account. It's free. You create a free account. And then basically you uh, run Postman. So basically, I already installed Postman on my machine and we are looking at it as we speak now. So basically this is Postman after you run it. Basically I already, I'm already logged in so that's why it looks like this. Uh, if you are not logged in it will ask you to enter create an account or you log in. You can create an account it's free. Okay. Now what happens is that let's say I want to make a request. So you click here and it shows you you can pick what what is the what is the method that you are trying to, to use. What's the URL that you want to go to? And then it asks you, are there any parameters? Are there any query parameters? Remember the query parameters in the previous uh, video where we talked about query parameters that are associated with the URL. Are there any headers that you would like to add? Um, is there a body that you would like to include in the request? So these, basically these are the components of the request. For example, I have uh, a server that I'm using here. So HTTP, I, and I use HTTPS, which is the secured version of HTTP, right? So it's the encrypted the HTTP, but on in, on 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 a on an encrypted uh, end-to-end -end encrypted channel. So basically, that's HTTPS. So anyhow, so I'll go here, and uh, the app is on www.theappsdoctor.com. Okay, and basically the uh, API is called Contact. So basically, what's going to happen is that the URL is uh, www.theappsdoctor.com, and then forward slash contacts, right? And then that's a get request. We click on send. And basically, it returns back something. You can see here the response. It doesn't receive any parameters, and it returns back a response that looks like this. It's just a list of a list of contacts, and each line you could see here. Each line is a contact. This is the ID of the contact, the name of the contact, and uh, the email of the contact, the phone number of the contact, and the type of the contact. It's a cell contact, office phone, and so on. And you could see that this is one way of representing the data. It's not the optimal. We'll look at JSON uh, in, in the next couple of videos. But that's just to show you that you can make a request. So when you click on send here, we made a request. We received back a response. Okay. And basically, usually what we do is we create a collection. When you create a collection, you can uh, add all the requests that you would like to use. Because see, I already created a request here. And I have another uh, request that, for example, that looks like this. And it's a search. Okay, and basically the, the another request that I have is called the search and that search allows you to search for contacts. So these are the contacts in the system. I would like to search by the name, for example. I want everybody who their name starts with an N. All right, so uh, I know that it's a question mark and I will say name equals N. All right, and you could see that it already added the parameters for you here. So this is a query parameter. See here, this one is a query parameter. There is also another query parameter for this for this service called type. And the type, say, for example, is cell. Okay, so now I want anybody who their name start with N and they, uh, uh, the type is cell. And here you go. Now, I don't, I am don't, I'm not interested in adding the name. And I click on send. And basically, I'm getting everybody who has cell. So basically, the specific functionality of the API or of the service that we are trying to connect to is related to that service per se. But what, I, what we would like to demonstrate here is that how you pass query parameters. You could see here, I'm passing query parameters in the URL and that service, which is this URL, that service that's sitting at this URL is expecting to get some form of 
parameters. Let's say, for example, when you check the box, this means the parameter is included in the request. And when you uncheck it, the parameter is not included. You can see here it's included, not included, included. And I click on send. It does that. Let's say I don't add any parameters. It means that there are no parameters in the URL. I click on send. And it says that, oh, no, enter the name and type of the parameters for the search. Notice that this is the response, right? So this is the request at the top. The bottom here is the response. Now look at the status code. It says 400, which is bad request. All right. So basically, this is the status code. Let's say, for example, we uh, include the type and I click on send. And you could see here the status is 200. This means that it's OK. It went through. So basically, this is the status code. When you look at the response, the response has uh, three main components. One of them is the body, the status code, and the header. Right? We'll look at the header later. But it's the body, the status code. That's the, the response. The request is basically you decide on where are you going to send the parameter based parameters based on the requirements of the uh, the service. So basically, the service here is very simple service where I uh, you just specify a parameter in the in the URL and you see here Postman allows me to do all of that. Actually, I can call this API because this is a GET request. I can easily take it to the browser and include it in the browser. So let me go open a, a Chrome uh, browser. Okay. And I click here, and you could see here that it does return back. You could see here it. I can make a GET request, and in the browser I can do that. You know, but Postman allows me to pick all these types, all these methods. Okay. All right. So basically, we are looking now at Postman and how Postman allows me to do all these methods. All right. So now you could see that I have all these requests and I would like to share them or store them with somebody. You could see I could save them or I could don't save. I don't need to save them. I already have them saved. So I'll don't save them. If you look at collections, you can create a collection. You just create a collection. You create, say here, create new collection. You give it a name and so on. And then basically the collection that I created is here. You see here, these are the contacts that I, uh, I just created. You could see here, this is a get. This is the get. I store them. For example, this is the contacts. I click here. It gets me the contacts. Here it is. Right. And then there is a search. Here's the search that we looked at. I could search for everybody who their name starts with an S and uh, home. Or, for example, only home. Here it is. It returns people who are home. And you could see home has R and W. So, for example, let's say uh, I want somebody RH. I click on send. And basically, it returned. Uh, I need to check the name and do this. It returned only this person. So anyhow, so you could see that I can pass parameters in the uh, URL. Okay. Usually get requests, you say pass the parameters in the URL. All right. Now, what if I want to get a specific user? That's one approach. The, the first approach is you pass the parameters in the URL after, after the question mark as a query parameter. So you can add parameters as query parameters. Parameters can also be added to the URL itself. So basically, for example, I want the the uh, the uh, profile information for contact with ID number one. So when I click on that, this API will return this. Let's say, for example, I want somebody who is ID 100. I click on send, and it tells me bad request. This user doesn't exist. Okay. So basically, uh, it, it says bad request and so on. So basically, that's one thing to look at. That's when you... Um, uh, uh, another API where also the, the the user ID is passed at the end of the URL, right? This is not a query parameter. It's part of the URL. You could see here the query parameters are empty. But anyhow, so that's one another way of sending data in for GET requests. Let's save this one. And let's save this one. You can save them, right? And then once you save them, I can export it. I can share it with somebody and so on. Now, another API, which is creating a creating a creating a contact. You can see here when you create something, this means you want to post this data to the server. You know, you're creating something, right? Creating or updating or editing something. You're creating it. You're posting some d new data or data to the server. And in that case, we will use the uh, post. So basically, that request uses the post request. And then you could see here there are no query parameters in the body. It's key value pairs also. You just pick the form data and you add key and value. So basically, there is a name email phone and type and then basically the name is this person the phone is the email is this and so on so now if you look at the contacts if i go here and i click on the contacts and i click on send so basically these are the list of contacts there is one bob smith already in the system so let's say we want to create a new contact so here it is and then the body let's create tom smith and let's make his email t 
at t.com there is no tom smith here see here there is no tom smith now when we go here and send this request it responds back with a status code of 200 saying that this user create contact created successfully and if we go back to contacts and you click on send again and you could see the contact was created all right so basically what happens here is that this is called a post request in a post request and we are sending the data in the body so basically in the previous search for example we sent the data in the url as query parameters in here or a query string here no the data is being sent inside the body uh, also using a key value kind of pair which is separated using semi uh, separated using some kind of separator that the body is going to take care of but anyhow it's a key value pair that's stored in the body and you send it and basically it creates a contact so now if you go here there are going to be two tom smiths right, because we created another one okay so that's the create also the update you could see the update the update also uses the post request and then the update you just have to specify the information you have to also tell me who the user is because when you are updating some user you need to tell me which user are you updating let's say we do this i don't think there is a user which is 1641 so basically when you run it it tells you unable to update this user and sends back a status code of 400 why because this user doesn't exist but let's say you pick a user that exists let's say user number eight okay we'll go here and id i'm going to make it eight and basically we are going to change the name of that user to be this and click on send and make it, it says contact updated successfully when you look at contacts again and it's you could see that it did get changed to the new uh, information that you passed here all right now when you let's say in the create let's say we didn't pass the name and the email and you see here by unchecking them this means i don't want to include them in the body and i click on send and it will tell you in enter a valid name all right so let's make me check it this means the valid name has been entered you click that says enter a valid email this means that the server is checking uh, doing validation on the parameters that you are sending and then it's sending you back a response with a status telling you what to do right so basically here is status code this is a bad request because it's missing an email now when you send that if everything goes well you get a status code of 200 and everything is good and then that user got added so basically you go here you go here you have another user that got added so we looked at the contacts this is just an example uh, service just to show you um what any uh, how the how postman could be used you could say you could make get requests you can make post request you can also delete a user so basically to delete we need to specify who you want to delete and in this case it's a post request and inside it there is an id let's say i want to delete the user number let's say get all the contacts there's a contact number nine i would like to delete that contact so I, all i have to do is just specify the contact number or the id and i click on send and it says contact successfully deleted i go back here and i click on send and you could see that the contact was removed so you could see that using postman i am able to make these requests and to visualize them and see the responses and then then this this will help you a lot when you are writing your code because when you're writing code to to make these requests you really have to understand what these requests look like what do they include what components they uh, require what parameters have to be sent and so on all right so please go install postman and play around with it and use these apis these apis i will post them on the uh i'll post them on the on the website and you could go and access them and uh get more engaged with using postman please let me know if you have any questions thank you